Hi everyone and welcome to SC Rewind, a look back at the 10th season of RIT Sports Zone. Today we'll highlight the major moments and tremendous achievements accomplished by our RIT Tigers. That's right, Shelby. One of the most inspiring stories of the year comes from an RIT alum. Matt Hamill was the first deaf wrestler to win a national collegiate championship and the first deaf person to participate in mixed martial arts. Through the years, Hamill's been an inspiration to many by overcoming adversity to make his dreams come true. In October, after years of production, his life story filled with many ups and downs finally hit the big screen. Okay, we're rolling, and action. It's been over two years since the bright lights of Hollywood came to RIT to feature one of our own. He was always the center of attention, and wherever we went, wherever we traveled, you know, people, you could always hear them whisper under their breath, you know, oh, that's Matt Hamill, you know, I've got to watch him wrestle. Matt Hamill, a former RIT NTID student and three-time Division III wrestling champion, first caught Hollywood producers' attention when he became a contestant on the Ultimate Fighter reality show. My writing partner, Eben Kaspar, uh, saw it on the UFC reality show a few years back. Thought it'd be, he thought Matt was an inspiring uh, guy himself, and uh, we looked into it. We tracked him down, met him, interviewed him. Um, thought it'd be a good idea for a script and wrote the script. I think the, the writing process was difficult to, in the beginning because to try and have uh, explain to someone that we're going to write your life story, but we're going to just fit it in a three act structure and an hour and a half film. Combine your dad and your yeah. grandfather into one character. Not only is his story unique, but the final result is the first of its kind. And. Cut. One of the really cool things I think that we've been thinking about this project from the beginning is it's going to be totally subtitled. So the hearing people will be able to hear the English, but they'll have to read the subtitles for the ASL and vice versa for the deaf people. I told you your whole life you don't need to be treated different, but I am different. There aren't a lot of movies that you can go to the theater and watch hearing and deaf together unless they're foreign films because the deaf people need the subtitles. So it's kind of this one of a kind movie where, where deaf people and hearing people can watch it together in the theater. After years of production, the movie titled The Hammer, after Hamill himself, has already won eight film festival awards and has finally hit the big screen in over 100 theaters nationwide. I'm going to tell you you have a highly intelligent grandson who's profoundly deaf. <laughs> well, already we've, uh, we've went eight for eight in film festivals, which is awesome. I think it was uh, AFI in California, Maui, uh, Cleveland. We just wanted to, to hit the right audiences and kind of bridge the gap and, and have it be a um, blindside meets Rocky meets Rudy type of film. We knew the film was special from the beginning and everybody's been involved with it, you know, especially uh, I myself was very late in the process, but it's been phenomenal to see that everybody else is coming out and supporting it. And the vast majority of those awards came not from critics, but they came from the audience members themselves who love the film and just want to see it succeed. What's it like for you, just this feeling that you have now that your life is made into a movie? Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's something that, um, it's so weird. It's really weird because, I mean, it was a strange thing to me. I mean, I didn't expect to go this far. I, I mean, let's go back a little bit. This movie, uh, The Hammer, it took us six years for the project. I thought, you know, it won't be really special like that. I thought it might be really short the one there, but I realized the movie producers did not give up. But overall, you know, what I feel like is, wow, it's very special, you know. It's a special moment, you know, to have someone, you know, about my life showing them around the world, and it's, it's really amazing. Hamill's story will certainly serve as an inspiration to both the deaf and hearing community. You know, I hope that they just enjoy the film and feel good about it. You know, obviously the message is overcoming struggles at any point in your life. Um, I haven't seen the film until tonight, but the parts I've seen are really uplifting. And, um, you know, it's a great message, and I think it comes at a, a pretty cool time. You're a motivational speaker. You're a UFC fighter. You can speak six languages. Like, for you, what is your biggest accomplishment? Well, I'm still not that fun. I'm still not that fine, you know. Other people can see my eyes, you know. I'm just not really happy, but I still have 
more to prove from around the world, you know. I still have something to prove. You're watching RIT Sports Zone, college television award winner for best newscast in the nation. Welcome back to SC Rewind, a look back on season 10 of RIT Sports Zone. Last season, RIT kicked off its campaign to build a new home for hockey when alumnus Steve Schultz donated $1 million to the school. This past November, the Tiger Power Play scored its most significant donation yet, and RIT's future home was named. Construction on the future home of RIT Hockey hasn't even begun, but the new facility already has a name. Thanks to a $4.5 million partnership with the Policini Foundation and Tom Galassano, the hockey program will soon call the Gene Policini Center their new home. This is an amazing story, and we just couldn't have a better name for this arena. You know, uh, Gene Policini and Tom Galassano were childhood friends. When uh, Tom Galassano decided that he was going to try to start a company, which eventually became Paychecks, Together they built the company into what it is today. It's a tremendous story of personal friendship, hard work, perseverance, and I think RIT, of course, is the beneficiary of that extraordinary relationship. And what a better way to honor Gene Policini's memory than to have his name on this magnificent new facility. Now, what does this donation say to the Policini's and Tom Galassano's commitment to the community? Well, I think, um, and maybe not as publicized all the time, the, the money that uh, they certainly uh, help out many, many causes uh, throughout our community. Uh, community. Uh, the community is very important to them. These are people that, uh, uh, you know, Rochester is very special to them and, and really help uh, Rochester thrive. Uh, we, we really, really appreciate uh, everything that they've done. How gratifying is it to you in the campaign? You know, it couldn't be better. Uh, it's a, the, exactly the big gift we needed to get this campaign going. We're, I think, over halfway there now. I think that this will build excitement towards the campaign, and hopefully if we raise a couple million dollars more this spring, we'll get an architect, and maybe if we get a couple million after that, we'll start construction in the fall. So how much have you raised so far? About a little over $8 million, and uh, we're very encouraged by what we hear from the community. We have some other large asks out. There's no question we're going to build this thing. The only real question is when. Now, do you think you're going to start building, you know, before you get the 15 million or wait until then? Well, now that we have a name for the center, it makes it, it, makes it easier for us to start looking forward to getting an architect and thinking about the placement and making some more firm, firm plans to make this happen. And so it's exciting. What does this do to the momentum of the campaign? Oh, it, it, uh, it's a big surge, let's put it that way. You know, you, when you get a $4.5 million gift, it sends a message out to folks that uh, we're serious, we got some people behind us who are serious about it, and, uh, and, I, and I think it's going to develop kind of a snowball, a little domino effect, we'll get more gifts, bigger gifts hopefully, and we'll get to that uh, $15 million, million dollar point sooner than we think. Have you, are you talking to some other major companies, and is there you know, a major donation in the works? Or? We have several things in the works, they're not nearly as big as this. But we have quite a few things in the works, and you know they all add up. And uh, you know we're going to get there. And and I'm I couldn't be more thrilled, not only with this wonderful day and this wonderful announcement, but the team's playing well tonight. So what's not to like? Is it kind of hitting you that a new rink is really going to come to campus? Yeah, it is. I mean, we've been talking about it for a while and uh, very hopeful, and we've had some very generous gifts already. And uh, the thing that uh, I guess I appreciate more than anything else, or I think is special about this, it's coming from people with sincere interest in hockey. And I think it makes it that much more meaningful. The, the name Gene Palacini will live on for a long, long time and will be a very special building in our community. When you see the president standing out there saying that this thing is going to become a reality, and I, I, I kind of watched, I looked up in the stands and I, you know, I just saw the excitement in their eyes and their, and their voices. You know, it's, uh, what we have here is a pretty darn special thing. Now we have the Gene Palacini Center. We'll have people who knew about Gene, his work, his contributions to the community. Uh, I, I, I don't know how this can't succeed now. RIT has selected BBB Architects of Toronto to manage and design the Gene Policini Center. Now, construction is expected to cost between 30 and $35 million, and the school hopes to break ground in the fall. 
For more information on how you can join the effort to help build the Gene Policini Center, visit rit.edu slash powerplay. While still to come on Sports Zone, the women's RIT hockey team reaches the pinnacle of Division III hockey and then announces a major move. That's all ahead. You're watching SE Rewind in high definition. Welcome back to Sports Zone. It was the greatest offensive season by an individual in the 16-year history of the RIT women's lacrosse program. Fairport's Shelby Vackner set school records with 78 goals, 37 assists, and 115 points during her junior season, earning Liberty League Player of the Year. On the men's side, senior Tyler Russell was named the Liberty League's Player of the Year. Russell led the Tigers with 53 goals this season. Now, he also played a huge part in helping RIT reach the Liberty League Championship game against Union. Russell scored three goals on the day, and RIT went on to win 8-6 to six to capture their first Liberty League title. So what was the mindset going into today's game? Uh, I guess the same as any other game. You know, the, the guys needed to be uh, focused today, and and um, understand the game plan and stick to it and, and be disciplined. And I thought we did a, a good job of that. We hustled, uh, we came up with ground balls. And to be honest, that's been the key to most of our games. Our, our mindset was basically uh, come out of the gates quick and uh, you know take it from there and then hopefully our momentum would carry us to the end. Uh, we knew it was gonna be a really tough one. We just knew that if we played our, our game, you know, RIT lacrosse, that we would win this one. And we were fortunate enough to pull it out in the end. You know, it was a close game last time. Uh, we know they're really defensive oriented, and we knew it was going to be a low-scoring game. Uh, the final eight to six. Uh, last game was ten to four, so we didn't we didn't expect to come out here and put up huge numbers. So uh, we just had to bury our shots and uh, take care of the ball. You know, they played St. Lawrence to a really good game the other day. They came back and they gave us a run for our money today too. So we knew that it was going to be a tough one, but we knew if we worked hard again that we would win it. And as your first year in the league, did you ever expect to make it this far? Certainly one of our goals. Yeah, I mean, certainly one of our goals. I mean, we wanted to uh, to make our mark the first year here. It's uh, it's a great league. Uh, we're, we're happy to come into the league and, and uh, get our first championship, and hopefully we'll have many more to come. This is this is just one of our goals. Um, obviously, the, the ultimate goal is to win the national championship, and that starts uh, probably tomorrow, to be honest. So, um, you know, that's our, that's our next step, uh, you know, Keep playing one game at a time. Hopefully we get another home game and we'll take it from there. The Tigers made their third straight appearance in the NCAA tournament. RIT defeated New England and Western New England before losing to Tufts in the NCAA quarters. You're watching RIT Sports Zone, College Television Award winner for best newscast in the nation. Welcome back to SC Rewind as we look back on the 10th season of RIT Sports Zone. Now, for the third straight year, the RIT men's hockey team reached the AHA championship game. But for the second straight year, the Tigers were shut out by Air Force goaltender Jason Torp. The Falcons net miner stopped all 33 shots he faced as Air Force captured its second straight AHA championship 4-0 over the Tigers. We really needed to score goals and we didn't get it and uh, um, you know I, I don't know the answer to that why but uh, um, tonight I just thought it was just uh, we weren't energized enough to get the, the second shots or the third shots or, or get to the net a little bit quicker or beat guys off the boards. We just uh, you know they beat us and it was the bottom line. RIT opens the 2012-13 season on the road at Michigan on October 11th and the 12th before returning to Rochester for Brick City Showdown against Penn State on October 20th. While the men's team had another good season, the women's hockey team stole the headlines. For the second straight year, RIT reached the Division III National Championship game. 
and it was a rematch between the Tigers and Norwich University. But this time around, RIT would not be denied. Courtney Kunichika had one goal and three assists as RIT captured its first women's hockey national championship with a 4-1 to one victory over the Cadets. After winning a Division III record 28 games en route to the title, the Tigers announced they're moving on up next fall. Kristen Clock has the story. Well, good morning and welcome. Uh, after years of dominating Ryan, Division uh, III and just days after winning a national championship, RIT announced it will elevate its women's hockey program to Division I next fall. What does the women's transition to Division I hockey mean for RIT and the program? Well, it's, it's very big. Um, a lot of people think that this is uh, strictly about women's ice hockey. It's not. Uh, what this does is it, it pairs us, pairs the women's hockey program with the men's. And, uh, and, and I, I think as a result of that, the future's unlimited. When you joined the staff, could you have envisioned all of this happening? No, I, this is my ninth year at RIT. And when I started, we were, I was at men's division three. Then we, I went to men's division one, women's division three, and now women's division one. So I don't know too many people have done all four leagues, and I don't know anybody that's done it at one school. So it's a pretty special time, you know, in my career at RIT to have have a chance to go at all four divisions. I'm running on just adrenaline right, right now and I think I need a nap just to kind of sink, like have it sink in. But from the weekend, from yesterday, my the phone didn't stop going and then today, and then with the news about just assuming a, a full schedule already is just, uh, you know, it's mind blowing. The Tigers will join College Hockey America and they will be eligible to compete in the CHA playoffs right away. How exciting is it that the team will be able to play in the playoffs oh that I just found that out today so that's a complete shock um, you know we were kind of talking about it before the championship here that you know this is our last chance for you know the seniors the juniors and possibly the sophomores at a playoff a playoff run so to find out now that we're eligible our first year is just a huge bonus for our team and uh, it's certainly an extra motivation now I think we all knew that we were going division one but just to be able to play playoffs is amazing, especially as a freshman, you're going to be able to have three years as a Division One player. It's it's unbelievable. Beyond excited. With that announcement, um, we weren't really expecting the playoffs, too, so that kind of just put the cherry on top of it. It's really, really exciting. You said earlier that RIT was a perfect fit for this league. What do you think they are? Well, you know, again, the, the history and, and the success of the program, we, we, you know, the, they have a facility on campus. It has everything that you need uh, to grow a program at the Division I level. There is a, a commitment by the administration. There's a commitment by the school. There's a commitment by the director of athletics. There's a commitment by the president to support the move to Division One. That's huge. And when you have that, that, that can only bring one thing to both the league and the program, and that's success. Next season, the Tigers will be playing some of the best teams in the country at hockey's highest level. How do you think the team will do in Division One? I think the first few years might be a bit rocky, but I don't think we're going to set ourselves back or kind of give ourselves the, oh, we just came from D3, we're not going to do as well. Like We're definitely going to work really, really hard this off season and get into D1 shape and be ready to outplay some of the top players in the country. I think we might get from some of the teams being like, oh yeah, you won a championship? Well, here, we're D1, like try and compete against us. But I think we'll definitely be able to handle that well. You know, we did just win a championship and like, yeah, it might be D3, but that's a pretty big accomplishment. And I think having that confidence, we'll be able to carry that through next year. It's definitely going to be the elevated game, I think. I think Division One is, the skill level is a lot higher. I mean, our team is very skilled and we, I don't think we'll have a problem, but it'll be a big adjustment. Although RIT still won't grant scholarships, the announcement will certainly be a huge boost to recruiting. With a Division Three national championship and transitioning to D1, and then they're building a new arena, what do you think this is going to do for recruitment? It's going to do leaps and bounds. I mean, really, we're going to be able to bring in such better players and be able to have such a better team. People, especially at the school with the education as high as it is, people want to be here and want to play at RIT, and it'll just help tremendously. Oh, it's huge for recruiting. You know, with the girls coming in, you need to show them, uh, we can show them that the support of the fans in the arena that we have already, um, and that's, 
it's a huge recruiting tool in itself. And then you throw on top of Division One name now, um, piggybacking a national championship, and then building a new arena that will be state of the art. You know, it's uh, it's not going to get. Uh, it'll be tough, but it's not going to be as tough as it has been in the past. RI Table joins Syracuse, Robert Morris, Mercyhurst, Penn State, and Lindenwood University in the CHA next fall. They'll start their season in Ritter Arena on September 28th when they host Mercyhurst. Well, once again, hockey was the talk of the Brick City thanks to a remarkable run by the Lady Tigers. So we wrap up our 10th season of sports and with a look back at the sights and sounds from the championship season that was. Ladies and gentlemen, here are your RIT Tigers! The quick shot and a goal! Julie Hall with her first collegiate goal and the Tigers go up 7-1. As the RIT women's hockey team faces off against ECAC West rival Buffalo State, they do so supporting another great cause. Having blacked out Ritter Arena last year in a fight against heart disease, this year the Lady Tigers will be wearing camouflage jerseys in order to pay tribute to the United States Armed Forces and raise money for the Wounded Warriors Project. Eight seconds remaining in the period. One timer by Moss. Goes up high behind the net. Love that in their closing seconds. Tigers on in front. Is it going to count? Yes! Count it right at the buzzer! One last chance. 2 1. And the RIT Tigers are the regular season champions of the ECAC West. I well, we just couldn't be happy to just to erase that loss off our record and kind of start fresh with them and um, earn our way into a tournament. RIT hosting Concordia Moorhead in the NCAA quarterfinals at Root Arena. Third period of Tigers with the great puck mover. Courtney Kunachika finds McCray in front for her second on the day. McCray scored the hat trick to lead the Tigers to a 5 2 victory. It's teamwork. <laughs> We just, we don't want it, we didn't want it to be our last game and we just went out there and tried our best and just happened that way and glad it did. So it's on to the national semifinals where SUNY Plattsburgh awaited the Tigers in OT. REN, Yokoyama centers to Lindsay Gray for the game winner. RIT wins it 2-1 in overtime and advances to the national championship game. RIT will go back to the national championship game tomorrow night. And control puck to Skudichika scores! Great individual play by the sophomore. And the Rochester Institute of Technology Tigers will be your 2012 NCAA Division III Women's Hockey Champions. We talk about being inspired, play inspired, and then uh, inspire each other. And they all did that. It's an unreal feeling. I mean, yeah, I, I can't even explain the feeling right now. I mean, like cloud nine, it's, it's ridiculous. I am more proud than I can say. They earned this championship the old-fashioned way. They just worked hard for it. And it's wonderful to see all that hard work get rewarded. It's a great day for RIT, great day for the team, great day for the coaches. Just a great day all around. <laughs>